Welcome to Building My Legacy Podcast. This podcast is designed for leaders and entrepreneurs who want to leave a legacy and will provide strategies that focus upon key elements for legacy creation, determining your desired impact and its benefit, increasing your legacy's reach by engaging key stakeholders, planning, prioritizing, and executing. Here's your host, Dr. Lois Sonstegard. Welcome, everybody, to today's Building My Legacy podcast. I have with me today Nikki Bradley. She is a marketing brand uh, strategist and does a lot of work looking at who is it that you really want to work with so you end up building what it is that you're envisioning. And so there are many parts to what you do, Nikki, and I'm going to let you explain to the audience more fully what it is that you do, and then I want to get into um, what it is that we're going to talk about today. Sure. Um, So I help business owners to get clarity around their brand, um, get confidence in their messaging, and really to package up Uh, whatever the impact it is that they're trying to achieve in this world into the right offers and services so that they can achieve the greatest profits that they're trying to get. And so uh, what that tends to look like is um, I get people that are um, struggling or stuck with, you know, who do I want to be as a brand? Like, what do I want to be known for? And sometimes that's at the beginning stages of their business. Sometimes that's after they've been in business for a while and they look up and they're like, okay, what have I built? This looks nothing like what I want this thing to look like anymore. And sometimes they're stuck in their revenue. And so we need to reconfigure kind of what they're offering to make sure that it's in line with where they're trying to go. Um, And then sometimes it's just trying to figure out what their marketing messages look like so that they're connecting with the right audience and the right clients that they're trying to attract. And Nikki, when we have talked, you have shared with me how targeting the right audience is so key to building a great marketing and brand. I want to talk a little bit about that because you have um, a little bit of a unique twist on that. And I think it's such a great twist uh, for us to all think about because I think down the road it has other implications. And we're going to come back to that. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of times we focus on when you hear people talking about, you know, who's your target customer and who's your target market. And a lot of times we put that into this box of a buyer persona and that tends to lean towards things like the demographics of the person or what does their lifestyle look like? So it might be like, okay, well um, I'm looking for people with this title. I'm looking for people that, you know, I target, Um, men or women at this stage in their career or that are at this level, or I look for um, companies that have this revenue, or I look for um, people that live in, um, in urban cities or whatever, whatever it might be, or, you know, families that have 2.2 kids and a dog, (laughs) whatever that might be. And, um, and I think those are great things to look at. Um, That helps us to get an idea of, Um, who you're talking to. But what I have found is that um, when we peel back the layers and we look at, look at it more from a standpoint of who is your ideal client? Who is it that you really want to work with from um, a characteristic standpoint? From what are the qualities and the character of the person that it is that you're trying to work with? that gives you a better indication of um, the right people that you want to attract to your business. So that might look like instead of looking at, I'm looking for women that are between the ages of 30 and 55 that are making X amount of income, that might look more like I'm looking for people that um, operate out of integrity. I'm looking for people that, um, are um, family oriented. I'm looking for people that um, that want, like for you, that want to build legacy businesses. I'm looking for people that um, 
that are self-starters, that are go-getters. And one of the things that I, that is on my list is I like people who are actively ambitious. So I love that. I absolutely (laughs) love that. It resonates with me. So I love it even more, but yeah. (laughs) So, um, I, I started using that, that phrase, um, gosh, probably 15, 20 years ago. Um, I just, I, you hear people that are, that talk about, you know, one day I'm gonna, um, I sure wish I could, or, you know, they, they have these great ideas, but then they sit on those ideas. They don't act on them. And I want to work with people that are going after it. Like you have big dreams, you have big goals, and you're going after, you're doing something to go after those things. Um, and even if that means you're just doing, you know, taking little steps towards it, but you're doing something, you are acting on it. And those are the people that also have follow through. So I want to know that if I'm engaging you in my business, that you are going to, you're going to do the steps, you're going to do the work. Um, those are the people that I want in my sphere of my business. You know, Nikki, you talked about integrity as one of the areas that you, you look at. How do you determine that when you're encountering somebody or looking at a company? How, how does one measure integrity? Um, it's one of the things that I, it's not always something that you can judge right off the bat. And so, um, you know, we were talking about this a moment ago. My, my grandparents, uh, would talk about, you know, that we live in this microwave society that we want everything right now. And I think that sometimes we do that at the peril of making decisions too quickly. And sometimes that happens, when we're trying to navigate or qualify who it is that we want to work with, whether it be as clients and this, the way that I look at this doesn't just apply to clients. This works when I, when I set my list of the things that the criteria that I'm looking for, this goes to people that I choose as suppliers, companies that I work with as, um, as partners or people that I collaborate with or, um, people that I hire, um, I'm looking for these same types of characteristics in those people too. And so when it comes to integrity, um, I start looking for that right away. So if you tell me that you're going to send me an email or you're going to call me tomorrow and I don't hear from you for a week, you're out of integrity, right? Um, Now it might be, something may have come up, but if you don't do anything to tell me, you know, hey, I'm so sorry, I didn't reach out to you. I had a family emergency that came up or something. Then that's giving me a clue now that maybe you're not somebody who operates in integrity. Um, That doesn't mean that I'm not going to give you a second chance, but it starts, you know, people leave clues. Um, And Maya Angelou says, when somebody tells you who they are, believe them. So, um, so I look for things like that. And, and um, I don't want to say that I give tests, but I kind of give tests. (laughs) So there are, there are things that because I know what my criteria is, I built that into my qualification process. So when it comes to, um, to bringing on new clients, I have um, questions that I ask before. And, you know, we do, we do that all the time. Like when you go onto a company's website and you download um, a white paper they're asking you questions before you download it so that they can determine, are you the type of potential client that is a good fit for them? We have to do the same thing um, in other areas of our business. And and this is just part of my qualification process. I want to talk about this in a whole lot more depth because um, I was sharing with you before we started the podcast about conversations that I've had with a number of business people um, more in the m a area during the COVID um, lockdown, looking at what will be happening to businesses coming out of this. And one of the comments that I was hearing was, post all the government help, there will be probably a tightening of finance, money, accessibility to companies, especially the smaller ones, mid-sized and smaller. 
And so how will they grow and they survive? And one of the comments was, we're going to have to configure and work, find ways to collaborate. And, but it's not something that's a part of our corporate DNA much of the time, Mm -hmm. right? And so in a sense, part of what, when I'm talking with you, that comes to my mind is companies need to be um, aggressive about letting people know I'm a collaborating type. I'm a, because if this is what we're going to rely on, it's a message that needs to be gotten out so yeah. people can begin to assimilate that information. Yeah, definitely. And I think um, part of that goes into, um, you know, when I work with clients and we, we look at, you know, what are the things that you want to be known for? What is your brand personality? What are the things that you want people to say about you when you're not in the room? And, um, and if that is something that you want people to, to be having conversations about with you, because that's the thing, like, you don't want to always be, be shouting from the rooftops, Hey, I'm a collaborator. You know, you want other people to be talking about that because that's where your connections are going to be happening. That's where people are going to be saying, Oh, you're trying to do this project. Let me tell you about this company over here. They would be a perfect person or a perfect company for you to work with for that. So, um, People won't know that if your messaging is not clear, if you're not, if you don't get clear, first of all, with, you know, what types of of companies, what types, what are you looking for in the types of people that you want to collaborate with? And so it goes back to that whole criteria thing. You set that up front. So then you create messaging, you create marketing, your branding is, is centered around, this is what we stand for. These are the things that make us who we are. This is what we are looking for. Like this is, these are the types of of, um, businesses that we work with. These are the types of clients that we work with. And all of that is putting that messaging out into the, into the universe about this is who we want to attract. And that's how those collaborations happen too. So let me ask you about that because part of what goes into branding that I see is and advertising is there's this push and pull that we find between um, deception and truth, right? I have to position myself in this way. This is a story in the narrative I need to create. And part of that, is that deceptive? Is it truth? I maybe embellished it. How much did I embellish it, right? Mm. So, so what's your sense? You're a marketing person and a branding person. I am, but I'm also a person who, um, I, I believe that you have to tell the truth. I believe that you have to tell the truth because I think if I'm trying to attract people that are going to be truthful with me, I can't put something out there that is not in alignment with that. Um, karma, you- karma is a, <laughs> a witch with a B. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so that's one thing, but also that just with my, with my personal values, like, um, I'm a, I'm, I'm a woman of faith. And so that, that for me, I've just dis- made the decision that for, for my business, I, even if my, um, and it's, it's something that, you know, especially for anyone who might be listening that is maybe newer in their business. And I I understand because I have clients that are just starting out and I have clients that have been been in business for many years. And so the ones who've been in business for many years, they have a lot of success stories and testimonials and case studies and all of these things that they can pull from, from their marketing. But some of the newer ones, they're like, well, you know, I I don't have a lot of clients yet. I don't have, you know, a lot that I feel like I can, I can talk about yet, but that's okay. You start where you are. Um, And so I feel like, you know, if you don't, if you're not a hundred percent authentic from the beginning, um, the truth always comes out. And so it's going to come out when the client starts working with you or when you have that sales call with them and they start asking you about results that you've had with somebody else and you're sitting there stuttering, <laughs> you know? So I feel like you have to put forth 
the real you because you can only present your representative for so long. It's like when you date, you know, we show up for those first three months with the representative. (laughs) And then after that, you know, then you start um, burping in front of them. And that's when you find out, okay, is this person really the person for me or not? (laughs) Right, right. I I think that's an important discussion though right now because – I, I see the envelope often being pushed so much, and there's especially in sales, you see that being pushed. And um, I, I, your comment about knowing what you want to be known for is so important. So it's your reputation; it will precede you. It will, and it will define your business ultimately. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just I think that. Um, I think Jeff Bezos says that your brand is uh, what people say about you when you're not in the room. And it's so true. You know, there's always conversations um, and it's not, it's not a, a tooting your own horn thing. And it's not, uh, it's not anything like that, but, but there's often more than we think people are talking about, your business or they're talking about you. And sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's not. (laughs) Um, But we have no control about what people are saying. The only thing we can control is how we show up in the world. And so if we're clear about what we want to be known for, what we want people, what we would hope people would be talking about when we're not in the room, then we can do whatever um, is within our control to make sure that what we're putting out is in alignment with what, what that is that we want to be known for, what we want people to be saying about us. So walk us through Nikki for you, your ideal client, just the process you went through to determine that for you Mm -hmm. and how you've come to own that for yourself. Because I think the fear that people always have is if I sort and choose I'm going to close out this and this and this, and I'm going to lose revenue, right? Yeah. So how did you go about this process and um, come to a comfort with what it is that you put out? So the first thing that I had to get comfortable with is recognizing that there are billions of people in the world. I'm not going to, I'm not the right person for everyone that's out there. And that's okay. Because I, number one, I can't serve billions of people and I definitely can't do it well. So there is, there is room for everyone. And there are people, there are, you know, hundreds, probably thousands of people that do branding and marketing, but I do it the way that I do it. And I'm going to resonate with the people that I'm supposed to resonate with. Um, My method is going to be the right method for the people that I'm supposed to work with. And everybody else is just not, they're not my people. And that's okay. Um, And so when you come from that position, regardless of what industry you're in, regardless of what business that you're in, it puts, it takes you out of a position of, lack and a position uh, and puts you in a position of abundance. There's out of those billions of people, there's still a plethora of people that need exactly what I have. And I'm the best thing that they just don't know about yet. So that I tell my clients that all the time, because a lot of times, and, um, and honestly, I have, um, I, I, I deal with this a lot with, with women, uh, for whatever reason, this is, and, and it's, and it, it, this is something that happens across the board, imposter syndrome. Um, and I, you know, and women tend to struggle with this more than men, the statistics say, but, um, but we don't give ourselves credit for the things that we are, um, powerful in. And so a lot of the work that I do, even though it is, brand strategy and marketing. I do a lot of coaching with that. And so the coaching that I do oftentimes is helping people to stand in, in their power of what, so that they can be in a position of, you know what? I don't care that I'm not going to get everybody 
that's okay. I'm going to get the people that I'm supposed to get. So that's the first thing. I know that was kind of a long answer to that, but it, it's no. so important because if you don't have that, the rest of it's not going to matter. Um, so then the other thing is I just tactically, I look at, um, okay, who have been my best customers? Who have been my best clients? What did they have in common? Like, what were the things about them that made them be like, I would work with them all day, every day. If I could have a hundred of them, sign me up. And I made a list of like, what did they have in common? What were the things about them that made me love them? Um, and I started with that. And then I said, okay, let's marry that with what are the things about me that I really love? Like, what do I want? What kind of, what kind of people do like, if I could pick characteristics of myself that I would want to see mirrored back to me in my clients, what, what did the, what does that look like? Um, and I put those two things together. And the thing is, you're going to end up mirroring back to you. You're going to attract back to you a reflection of yourself anyway. So I'm like, well, what characteristics in myself do I want to amplify <laughs> so that I attract more of that to myself and couple that with the things that I, I saw in my past clients that I wanted to get more of. And for those people who may not have, uh, you know, a ton of clients to pull on, pull from yet, think about like who your ideal, who you would want to work with, um, like get a picture of those people. And what are the things that you like about those people that you would want to have them become your clients? What is it about them? For me, another one that I add to that is who am I naturally repelled from? Yes. There are people that you meet and instantly you go, oh, this is going to be work, right? Yes. And, yes. and sometimes you take them for a variety of reasons. But generally when you, I have done that, I've taken a deep breath and say, yep, there's a reason why I have that immediate response. So I stopped doing that. Okay. That was, that was a big turning point in my business when I, Interesting. Um, when I dis- made the decision that um, just like I made the list of the, the criteria of people I was looking for. Yeah. I made a list of the things that I did not want. So this is, this is who, who, what, I, who it's for, like who, what, what I do is for. And this is who it's not for. And I'm very clear about that. And so even in my marketing, I make it very clear. This is who this is for. This is who it's not for. So I let people um, decide for themselves. Okay, yeah, that's me. And the, the great thing about that is that the people who it's for, when they hear the who it's not for, they're like, oh, yeah, I don't like them either. Like, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so it's it, it and it confirms for them. Yes, she's my person. Like, that's the person I want. So for you, if you're looking for somebody to work with, what is your ideal? What are the characteristics you look for? Integrity. Integrity. Actively ambitious. Um, I'm looking for people that have a heart for people. So, um, so yes, your ambition is great, but if ambition trumps how you treat people, then we're not going to be a good fit. Um, because I started my business because I wanted to, yes, I wanted to create, um, legacy and, um, freedom, financial freedom for myself and and my family and, and have impact on the world. But part of that impact is I want to be able to help people so that they can create the legacy businesses that they want as well. And so if you don't have a heart for other people, then we're probably not going to be a good fit. Um, and so another one would be, um, I'm looking for people that, um, that are good listeners that do, um, you know, my mom always said you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> so, um, you know, right now we're doing a lot of talking, but most of the time when I'm uh, working with a client, I don't do a lot of the talk. I don't do a lot of the talking. Um, 
And I've always kind of been that. Like I, I, I sit back and I observe and I take in. Um, you know, I started my career as a management consultant um, with one of the big four. And I guess that's kind of a skill that got honed there because you had to listen to the client a lot in order to be able to go back and put together a strategy for them. And so I I really take that to heart. I think you really have to, um, I have to be able to listen, but I'm also looking for people that don't think that their opinion is more important than somebody else's. Um, and then um, the I think one of the biggest things is, and it's, and it's kind of a simple thing, but I'm looking for people that, um, I call it the airports test. <laughs> so <laughs> if I got stuck in an airport with you all day, would I enjoy my time with you? Interesting. So um, this was something that I used as a hiring um, filter when I was uh, managing national sales teams because we would um, we had to travel all over the country to go see clients. And so um, when we would travel, especially in the winter, you get stuck in the airport sometimes for hours and sometimes even get stuck overnight. And I was like, is this somebody that if we get stuck in podunk USA and there's nothing to do but look at each other and have meals together at some dive restaurant, <laughs> you know, am I going to still have be able to have conversation with them and enjoy the time with them? And that's who I want. That's who I want to do business with. You know, those are, it's, it's fascinating, the criteria, because those are not criteria you come up or answers to those criteria you don't come up with instantly. There are things that you're gathering data, gathering data, gathering data. So my guess is with what you do, there's a period of time where you sort, where you're deciding. So do you begin with a small project at first where you can both walk away as friends easily. Mm -hmm. How do you do that so you can move in and out should it not be a a good working relationship for you? Yeah, it it depends on, um, I think for anybody, it depends on your, how your business model is set up. So um, it can be, um, I think you look at it as far as your level of commitment and your level of access, their level of access to you. So as I'm, when I'm first meeting someone, I give them a little bit of access to me with a low level of commitment from myself as I'm doing my filtering and qualification process. So whatever that looks like to you in your business, that is, that's how you begin your filtering and qualification process. So it could be if you do like a, a, a one-off project, if that if that is the low level of commitment and, and uh, low level of access to you, then let that be it for other businesses. It might be um, like, I have some clients that are in the, um, the coaching and consulting space. And so for them, it's, you know, they have communities or, um, or memberships or things like that, where they have people that join where they, it's a low um, level of commitment um, at a lower price point, and that the people have a lower level of access to them. Um, I have corporations that I work with, and for them, it might be um, uh, a, a short-term contract um, where you know it's and it's an easy thing to get out of if it's you know not going to if you realize once you get into it that it's not going to work. I have clients that are freelancers. And so they're like, okay, I'm going to do this. Like you said, like do a project or I'm going to do a retainer, but it's a retainer that's only for three months to see if this works out. So it can be, um, it can be a mix. It's, but it's that low level of commitment, low level of access. You know, I have such a respect for that because I think that is where often people get trapped as consultants working with companies and, and, there's there's this push pull between wanting to do everything and help everybody and also knowing that you can't do it but 
being honest about that. So putting it in a package that you can honestly move in and out and have frank discussions. Because I think sometimes when what I've discovered is you sit down and you say, this isn't working because this is where we don't fit. People mm-hmm. are sometimes surprised by that conversation. And yeah. it's one of the most important conversations they get to have. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely is. And sometimes um, for me, the filtering happens even before I take them on as a client at all. So it's happening in those initial conversations. It's happening on sales calls. It's happening um, just in that back and forth. And I'm figuring out, like, you know, even when I was the example I was giving before, are you are you following through on the things that you said you were going to do when you said you were going to send me this? Are you sending it to me? Um, You know, those are the kinds of things that I'm I'm looking for and listening for. I'm listening to when we're having, um, if we go out to lunch, how are you treating the, the, the servers? You know, when I said I'm looking for people that have a heart for people, are you treating them like there's something on the bottom of, of your shoe or are you treating them with respect? Um, so things like that, those are things that I'm looking, I'm paying attention to um, in all of the interactions that I'm having with people. You know, Nikki, our time has gone very quickly, um, very, very quickly. And I just appreciate so much your perspective. You come here, a couple of observations. And one is you are so humble about what it is that you bring to your client. There aren't many people who come out of big four accounting experiences, consulting experiences, And um, many who do have a bravado that they bring with them that makes them, creates a distance, right? And you, you, you are so humble about who you are and the experience that you bring. So I find that incredibly endearing. And then, of course, your knowledge and how you go about doing things. Nikki, before we quit, this discussion today, one last thought that you would like to leave with our listeners today? Um, I think, you know, this whole process of figuring out who your ideal client is of the filtering and qualifying process, you know, you're, you're not going to get it right up front. (laughs) Um, And so, you know, one of the things that I, um, I really had to embrace it. I, I would say there's, there's two things I would say. One is just start, like it doesn't have to be perfect. Just start, like just start with just jotting down some thoughts and start with that. And it's going to evolve over time. And especially the more clients that you work with, you'll start to figure out, okay, this works and this doesn't, right. Or, oh, I forgot about that. Like that, I remember that client that did this. Let me make sure I include something in there that accounts for that. Um, and it's, it's interesting. I had a list. Um, I started a list when I was in college with one night with a bunch of my girlfriends. One had had a, a breakup and we were, you know, you're commiserating with your friends and talking about, oh, girl, you know, you, you don't need him. There's that that type of conversation. And that night we each took out a piece of paper and we made a list of what, what we wanted in the guy. Right. I kept that list for years and it had scratch throughs and circles and add ins and all of these things. And that list was actually how I found my husband. So this whole process of like figuring out what the characteristics are and I, and It's, I will tell you, honestly, that list started out with, he needs to be over six feet. He needs to have, he needs to be tall, dark, and handsome. He needs to have, you know, all of these things. Right. Um, and my husband is not tall. (laughs) Um, he is dark and handsome though, but, um, (laughs) but as the years went by, that list started to include, include more of the characteristics, the character traits that I was looking for. And that is what I got. And so what you write down, what you document is what you will attract. What you focus on is what you will attract. So that is what I would, that is the other thing that I would leave you with is just get it down, write it down and start focusing on that. And you'll, even if you're not actively 
thinking that you're putting it out there, you start internalizing it and you'll start projecting that out and it will, it will attract to you. So that's a great note to end on. What you focus on is what you attract. Yeah. Nikki, thank you so much for your time. And thank you all for listening to Building My Legacy podcast today. You've been listening to Building My Legacy podcast with Dr. Lois Sonstegard. To book your appointment with Dr. Sonstegard, visit www.buildtomorrow.com.